Hello, everyone, and welcome to Latin American Directions. Uh, my name is Nicholas Sussman from Bogota, Colombia, and I have the pleasure to have our as our next guest in this Colombian election 2022 series, we have Alvaro Salgado, a lawyer and political analyst. Alvaro, thank you so much for being here with us. Oh, thank you for inviting me, Nicolas. Uh, I'm really glad to sharing this space with you and to give my opinion regarding uh, Colombian politics and its current situation. Right, Alvaro, we've had a couple of guests over the last couple of weeks to discuss this election. Uh, I just thought it was worth taking some time to discuss it because it's atypical, right? Uh, I mentioned in the last shows that I would, thought I would never see for good or bad uh, a left government uh, in our country and then it happened. Uh, and our last two guests, they wouldn't say they were speaking in favor of the new government, but they were optimistic to some degree. One from the left perspective, of course, and the other one from the women's rights perspective, not precisely because of Petro, but because of the movements uh, that join him in government. Uh, well, what we continue is to see uh, the, the other side of the coin with you and uh, another guest next time. Uh, I would say you're a person that leans to the center of the political spectrum to some degree. Uh, and I would just like to have like a walk through uh, through the election. First, seeing how uh, you see the election, why they won, what happened this time that didn't happen before. And then we will move on uh, well with recent appointments, the first weeks and today, precisely we have the inauguration of the new Congress, right? Uh, just yep. for the guest's references, this week we have the Colombian independence, right? Which is the day where the, where the Congress period starts. Uh, so, Alvaro, just to start, what do you think about the election? What do you think happened this time that made Petro win? And why? what did he do differently this time that he didn't do the previous times he, he ran for president? Yes, well, uh, first and foremost, I consider that um, this election speaks really really good of the colombian democratic system we colombians can be counted in, in in the fortunate one on having a great and solid and transparent and really representing democratic system so i think that's a really important um uh point in our favor um well it, it's no it's no little little thing that we we're currently right now experiencing a change in the in the political um, spectrum that is gonna govern the country. We are leaving behind 20 years of Alvaro Uribe's um, political project, and we are entering in a government that is the current opposition. So first thing I wanna highlight is the uh, solid democratic system that Colombia has right now that allows it to shift power, to pass the baton in a peaceful Republican democratic way to an opposition government, to a left uh, president, uh, and leaving behind 20 years of Alvaro Uribe's project in, 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 the, in the country. Uh, being said that and, 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 and having that in mind, I consider that, of course, Gustavo, of course, Gustavo Petro's victory is a really important and major political change in Colombian tra political tradition. Um, We've never had a left government in the country, and that represents a lot. Represents a lot for a lot of people, especially poor people, especially uh, minorities that are currently being discriminated against. Um, however, I consider that Gustavo Petro has not won with the majority of the votes he wanted it to want to won, or he needed it to in order to have a strong, solid. Um, uh, govern uh, government uh, these next four years. He did one. He, of course, is the largest and most voted president in history in Colombia. But the country right now is literally divided in half. There's 10 million people that do not believe in Gustavo Petro, that rejects his political project, that is scared and remains except, uh, skeptic of what his government is going to bring to the country. And there's exactly 10 million people also that believes and support the change uh, he's uh, right now trying to implement in the country. 
So I think that what we have seen in these elections is a deeply and profoundly divided country. Uh, and uh, the government needs to know that and it needs to start governing the country with that um, president in mind, that they do not have a strong wide margin to govern the country. The country is split in half and he should um, bear that in mind when he sits to govern this, uh, this next month. Okay, Alvaro, so my next question uh, is about that change, right? Uh, there's hope, I would say, uh, and I couldn't avoid noticing that you quoted the, 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 the change, right? And I think there's a valid question about that change, if it's truly the change, uh, well, that, that, that the new government portrays, but also the, the change that the people are expecting. Uh, what can you say about that? What's your opinion on this change discourse? Well, yeah, I think it's difficult because um, it, it's weird, and and and, and it's uh, the 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 left project that Gustavo Petro currently is proposing. It's radically different from the one other leftist uh, govern go, uh, yeah presidents have proposed in Latin America. He is currently making alliances with the traditional politicians that have ruled the country over two hundred years. He right now has in, in, his, in his government coalition people from the Liberal Party, people from the Cambio Radical Party, which are uh, politicians that have uh, traditionally been uh, in, the, in the government coalitions uh, of, of, the, of the right governments that have ruled Colombia over, over the last 50 years. Um, so it's weird, it's funny. Uh, I think the change, uh, discourse or the change um, uh, speech that, that, that the Gustavo Petro government wants to implement is that, is basically propaganda, is basically political marketing working its, its way out. Uh, I feel that there's not going to be not anything different than what, that what, what we've seen in the country. We've, we were, we're going to see the government giving the politicians bureaucracy, we're going to see the government giving the politicians um, money. Uh, yeah, basically the exact same thing that all politicians have done, I feel that Gustavo Petro is going to do. So the change uh, speech that, that he won the presidency with, I think is just that, and a speech, and he's going to use it to, to boost his popularity, to boost the image of his government, but is not actual change. He has been aligning, or he has been made making alliances with the traditional politicians that have always ruled the country. And a lot of his victory, actually, uh, he owns them for that. He owns them for the 10, 10.5 million votes he got in, in this election, because where those politicians with his tra with with their traditional ways of making politics that uh, allowed Gustavo Petro to be president right now. So he's in a really, really, really huge debt with them and he needs to pay. Right, uh, and beyond the alliances in terms of the policies he's proposing, do you think there's gonna be any change? Uh, well, yes, of course. Any change in, in benefit of the population he allegedly represents? It's difficult. He has a really, really ambitious agenda, and I think four years are not going to be enough. He's going to spend all his political capital trying to approve the tax reform that, that the country needs right now, and that's going to be politically expensive to him. Uh, I think and I hope and I want that, the, that, that we can see uh, changes in major policies that the country needs, like the uh, uh, um, a change in the work policies, a change in um, many different areas. For example, maybe we need to change and reform and, and, and make improvements in, 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 in our justice branch. And that's something the country needs. But he has a really ambitious um, program that he has already um, started to not um, deliver because well, you can't change a whole country in four years. That's the reality. So I think he's going to make maybe two or three great and major uh, policy changes, but he's going to spend 
his political capital, a lot of his political capital is going to be spent in the tax refund the country needs, and 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 that's going to be really expensive expensive for him. Right, right. And now let's speak about the myths or the fears or the realities uh, that the opposition and even some sectors from from the center feel regarding regarding Pedro. What can you mention about that? Which ones are true? Which ones are false? Uh, which are the fears that you think are valid or, or the mayor concerns? Well, the, um, I, I speak for myself here. I have always considered myself to be a really democratic uh, person. I don't like personalistic political projects. I think whether they, are, they come for the far right or from the far left, the personalization and this is having politics based upon people and not institutions and ideas is really harmful it's really harmful for the strongest democracies in the world such as the united states and it's even harmful for weak or developing democracies such as the colombian one so i think uh, one of the biggest fears and 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 and, and one of the the greatest um dangers if we could call it like that of a Petro presidency is that that the the country and the poly and the politics it's gonna be personalized. It's gonna everything is gonna turn around him. Everything is gonna move around him, and um, and he's gonna be basically almost a monarch uh, ruling over the country. That's a really really important um, uh, concern I have as a citizen, as a person that did not vote for Gustavo Petro for that specific reason. I didn't identify myself, myself with the Petro project because of his personalistic, melomaniac ways of, of developing and delivering in politics. And second, second point I consider is important to having into account is that there is no actual opposition. We don't have an a strong leader that can lead that opposition that can be the one that from Congress uh, delivers the battles against the government and that the people believe. The only opposition Gustavo Petro has right now is um, Alvaro Uribe and his minions. And, and that group of people have ruled over the country for more than 20 years and they are completely uh, they are lacking credibility amongst the Colombian people. So there's no opposition at all. There's no strong opposition leader. And without a strong opposition, there's no democracy. So I think we're probably going to see what happened when Alvaro Uribe got to power 20 years ago. A highly, highly personalistic political project taking over the institutions with a really, really weak and, and, and really, really poorly uh, credited opposition uh, amongst, amongst the people, amongst the opinion. And that's going to really put the inst Colombian institutions in into a lot of pressure. Right. Right. Alvaro, another fear uh, that is widely mentioned about Petro and the left uh, in general is repeating the story of Venezuela mainly, but also other left uh, sided governments in the region for any reason. My question to you is, is this valid? Is this a real fear? Uh, how, how do you see that? And how Petro is similar or different from other left leaders in the region? Well, Basically, uh, I think the, the Venezuelan fear and the, the, the Venezuelan monster, it's out of order right now. Uh, the Venezuelan case is a really unique case that, that happened in, in a really specific circumstances upon which a person took over and hijacked the institutions of a country and, and basically took that country to a system failure uh, and to a, a desinstitutionalization process. Um, but I think Gustavo Petro is going to be kind of like a mix of, or he wants to be like, like Luis Ignacio Lula da Silva of Brazil. That's his, his major goal. But I think he's going to end up being like a Rafael Correa and Andres Manuel López Obrador, Ecuador's president and Mexico's president. 
He's going to be a really populist leftist leader. He's going to catch every single fight with the press. He's going to try to attack free, free press. He's going to try, try to uh, repress or, or to censor those um, journalists that are uncomf or uncomfortable to his government, such as Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador is doing in Mexico, uh, and such as um, Rafael Correa did uh, in Ecuador, in, 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 in which he actually got into a judicial fight with the press. Um, and economically speaking, I think that the greatest danger that Colombia is facing right now is becoming Argentina. We are at a really, really huge risk that the policies of Gustavo Petro um, become Colombia's economy in, a, in an Argentinian economy, a, economy, a really similar way of, of managing a, the economy. And that's why it's so important that the central bank remains independent. For me, and then again, I'm speaking for myself, if, if we as Colombians, after these next four years, we can say that he didn't touch the, the central bank independence and that he didn't try to reform the constitution, I feel that we can give ourselves for fortunate in that moment. Those are the two red lines that I think this government wants to cross. And if they do, the country is at a huge risk of failing and of, of of a personalistic project that destroys institutions. Right. Right. Now let's speak about appointments and his attitude after victory, right? So after victory, he gave a, a speech that I would consider uh, spoke mainly to his supporters, not to the country. He addressed, of course, many issues, but he spoke to his supporters, which I think is very consistent uh, with his campaign of representing those who were not represented before. Right. Uh, but that's the victory speech. And then you're starting to build your government, starting to build alliances, trying to get Congress to work with you, uh, starting appointing the ministers, uh, the leads of the main uh, administrative agencies. Uh, what's your opinion on, on this on this appointment so far? Well, uh, uh, I don't know. I, I see Gustavo Petro as, a, as the two man face. Yeah, he. He's trying to, to appoint and to get together a government really, really based upon technical people, upon um, people that can bring some, some calm to the markets in the economic aspect and really technical people in other, in other um, ministries, such as Alejandro Gaviria in the Ministry of Education. What I consider is going to happen is that for the first year, he's going to maintain these technical, um, these technical ministries and these these um, liberal um, people in the in the in the ministries. But he's going to start fighting against them. He's going to start having some, um, how do you say that? Some some clashes uh, with them because these are people that are not going to be is be easily influenced influenced by him. And when these people uh, do not do what he said, he told them to do, he, he tells them to do, he's going to be really, really um, uh, mad and he's not going to like that. So I consider them, uh, these, these appointments he's, he have made are really technical. Some of them are kind of like um, looked with a good view in the public's eye, but definitely I consider that that they're not going to last in the in the Gustavo Petro government. I consider, for example, Alejandro Gaviria, especially he's a really technical person. Uh, he did a good job when he was health ministry. And right now he's going to be education ministry. But I think he's going to have really, really great clashes with these people. Um, and they're not going to last in his government, definitely. Right. Uh, just to, to, to go a bit more in detail about that, uh, they're not going to last because of the lack of alignment with the policies or because of the president's uh, temperate personality. Uh, I, I think that for the Colombian audience, this can be 
perhaps clear, uh, but not for, for mm -hmm. a wider audience, right? Yeah, basically, I, I consider that they're not going to last and they're going to have a little bit of a rush patch with the president because of what he represents. He represents a personalistic project in politics. He represents himself. That's, that's the main goal. And he wants to do what works for him. Uh, and he has a really, really intense temperament. He was Bogota's mayor. And, and some people said, some people that, that, that were able to work with him, that he doesn't like criticism, that he likes the things done the way he likes them to be done. And sometimes that's going to clash with the, with the good benefit of the country, with the good interests of the country. And I think those ministries, those ministers are going to be uh, really uh, in constant friction uh, with whether to, to um, appease the president or to, to get the president happy or to really do what needs to be done. So yeah, he's a, a really difficult person. He, he likes things done the way he likes them to be done. And I think that's gonna clash with the carbon ministries he has or ministers he has already appointed in, in government. Right. Right. And now let's speak about another part of his inner circle, right? Or or of his cabinet or his surroundings, right? So so a very important uh character for the election was Francia Marquez, his vice president, uh a women, woman, social leader, uh Afro descendant. And and who gathered him the the support of, well, of Afro descendant groups, feminist groups, uh, popular groups, uh, and he has several uh, people from this this type of 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 movements in his government, which is not bad. Uh, but as you consider this as a, a personalistic process, joining. All all of these intentions can be uh, a bit contradictory with that type of project, right? How do you think this is going to look like in his government? What do you think is going to be the role of, of, of the vice president? Uh, and how is going to be the relationship of Petro as well with these groups that trusted him as the change? Uh, and then perhaps that doesn't happen because it's not feasible or it doesn't align with what he wants or, or something like that. Mm -hmm. Well, Three three main uh, aspects to answer your question, Nicolas. First, I consider the appointment or the election of Francia Marquez as vice president as one of the most important and symbolic victories Black people in Colombia ha have had. Black people in Colombia are one, one of the greatest and most historically marginalized population in the country. They are... They are the, the poorest among the poorest populations uh, in the country. So I think Colombia did actually change appointing Francia Marquez as vice president. It's symbolic. It represents a different new country with different greater needs uh, of, of change, of, of social mobilization. So I think it's really important and symbolic that we can have a black woman as vice president in the country, but also a woman that is a social leader, a social activist, uh, and a victim of the Colombian conflict. So it's really symbolic. Uh, having that uh, established, I consider she is basically a symbol. She doesn't have a really, really important weight in the Gustavo Petro government. There's even uh, some voices that said that they don't have a good relationship among between them. They don't like each other. They had really strong fights uh, during the campaign. And uh, there's a, a fraction, there's a fracture in their relation. She's gonna be appointing, a, appointed a, a equality minister. Uh, that's a new ministry that the government is going to create. But she is a person that does not know the, 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 the government as a whole. She has never been appointed to any kind of, of public uh, office. And I, I think that's going to be a challenge to her. But yeah, I think it's, it's, it, it, it can become a problem to Gustavo Petro. She's going to be a really un, 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 uncomfortable voice to the government. 
she is going to speak uh, and, and, and make uncomfortable uh, um, uh, interventions during these four years, and she's going to become an obstacle to Gustavo Petro uh, and, a, and a low point in his government. And, and, and lastly, I consider that he has already started failing those kind of groups that took him to the presidency. And the best example is the Ministry of Education. Uh, the Colombian Education Union, Colfecode, was a really, really important key uh, union that put Gustavo Petro in the presidency. And they asked him for them to be the ones that control the Ministry of Education. And he didn't deliver that promise to them, so he already started started to 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 yeah to not delivering his promises to those social groups that took him to power. So I think that's going to be a really really low point in his government. Is he's, he's going to to start failing those people that that actually um, took him to power, and he's going to start he's going to need to start playing the real politics. He, he's he's going to start playing the, the, the real politics when you're in power and when you are the one that uh, are, are, are managing the country. So he's gonna fail at all of, all of those, those people. Right. Right, Alvaro, what's your, I don't know, key message you would like to, to give to our audience as a final message? And to close our show, we know uh, these personalistic projects, as you as you define them, are not foreign to the U.S. Perhaps not a left-sided one, but a right-sided one. And for you, that's the main concern. Uh, yeah. I haven't heard that you have an issue with the fact that he's from the left. More about yeah. his 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 personalistic issue. So, what do you what do you leave as as last message to our audience? Uh, and and last message. Basically, that we Colombians have an important work and is to protect our democracy and our institutions from personalistic projects. I think that's a task that remains for our whole continent and perhaps the world to keep our, well, this Western hemisphere in the democracies. Alvaro Salgado, thank you very much. And we will continue with the last episode of our series in a couple of weeks. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.